In Syria, a handful of young Brits are risking their lives in combat. I'm only 22, and so many people younger than me fighting out there and dying. As unpaid volunteers with a Kurdish force which is battling to stop ISIS in its tracks. They're fighting not only to keep themselves safe, but they're fighting to stop the Islamic State from growing and hurting us back in the UK. Jim, Harry and Jack have controversially swapped the comforts of civilian life for the dangers of a foreign war zone. OK, so definite fucking movement over there. Harry, find out what that was! We're involved in something that's very important. It's an important area and an important time. So, yeah, of course it gives you a sense of purpose. Get some rounds down with your rifle. Now, as their unit sets out to attack an ISIS stronghold, they must be prepared to kill or be killed. We've got a bounty on each one of our heads is $150,000. just did a mock execution on the gun. Here, for the first time, in their own words, they tell the story of their Syrian war. And at 12, and have a little. Okay, now I'm enjoying shooting guns. The Islamic State is one of the greatest threats the world has ever seen. The Kurds that I volunteered to fight with, they're fighting for freedom, they're fighting for democracy, they're fighting for us. They are the last line of defense against the greatest menace the world has ever faced. Is this sort of every night, is it? Um, it's, it happens a lot, basically. There's sometimes we um, will take very light incoming, whereby uh, a very ambitious dash would fight, um, fire a couple of Bixie rounds at us. But the length is, is quite long. Um, although they have got it pretty well ranged, actually. <laughs> What did you see? Nothing. I don't know what the Havau was shooting at. Well, I shot nothing. <laughs> Just another guy down in Bournemouth. Another young 22 year old working like everyone else. I spent a bit of time in IT, painting and decorating. It just makes you think, what the fuck am I doing? There's people over there getting blown to pieces every day. Cutting off hands, cutting off heads, enforcing people to be sex slaves. And I'm just sat here fixing people's computers or painting people's walls. I mean, it does just make you think, like, literally, what am I doing with my life? Fighting is the simplest thing you can do. I mean, I've got no issues with uh, killing any of these Daesh guys who are trying to kill me. Um... Hmm. <laughs> that was interesting. That could have been at me. Sit behind the wall for a couple of minutes. <laughs> I became aware that uh, Western volunteers were coming here. There were a couple of uh, newspaper articles. What really jolted me was the um, photograph that I saw on Facebook of uh, an ISIS fighter holding up the severed head of a woman. It seemed like one of the most evil single images that, that I've ever seen in my life. I mean, obviously bigger atrocities are committed elsewhere, but, but as, but as a, an image and a message, um, that, that just, um, yeah, that, that affected me quite a lot.
YPG is a militia set up to combat ISIS in Rojava, in northern Syria. Roughly translates as People's Protection Unit. Everything the men do, the women do. That's the ethic. There's going to be a lot of Kurdish fighters moving into the area and we're going to have to go through every single village and root out ISIS wherever they're hiding. On top of the Abdullahis Mountains, we know that there's a large camp that's run by the Islamic State. It's the main headquarters for the entire region. And the end goal is going to be us arriving at the Abdullahis Mountains and then fighting our way to the top. This area is going to be the biggest fight for Rajab by far, uh, which is uh, intimidating, but I, I just can't wait for it to start. I'm, I'm sort of bored and I really need, it, something needs to happen basically. The YPG is open to foreign volunteers. Once you've sent a message on Facebook, you're then asked for details about yourself. They will then inform you that this is obviously a brutal war, that you could die. We didn't get paid. I'm not looking for a job. I don't want to be a freedom fighter for the rest of my life. It's just something that I felt had to be done. I knew that I could tick a box by helping people, by fighting. Um, and, I, and I've shot myself and to, to think now that I, I'm actually starting to enjoy it, bizarrely. <laughs> I had a few sort of arbitrary jobs, bummed around France and Spain and Italy a bit, came back and, uh, and joined the army um, when I was just uh, about 19, turning 20. I left the army in order to go to university. Studied English and European philosophy and literature. I was teaching English in Saudi Arabia to military cadets. It was good money, uh, which I needed at the time, very short contract. Um, but I broke contract to come here and, uh, and get involved with this. I was just peeking down the road and just yeah. in the arm. Yeah. Barely a bullet wound. There's an M16 around, just went straight in and out. For the rest of his life, he'd just be like, you put his arm up, stick his hand on the bars, yeah. but he wants to know how I got this bullet wound. <laughs> yeah, that's clean. Like, that uh, is a clean story. To line the drinks up, please. I was living in London, had a pretty average job, currency trading. However, I've always been interested in politics and what's going on in the world. When I saw what was going on over here, suddenly it was consuming what I was doing. I spent a lot of my time sort of reading the newspapers, finding out what was going on. But I didn't really tell my friends and family. I had a girlfriend at the time and, uh, well, it's over now. <laughs> she didn't understand um, my reasons for being here. There was uh, a lot of tears and all the rest of it and, yeah. left to go to Gatwick. I was actually sat at McDonald's. Two guys in suits just rocked up to the entrance. They sort of tried to talk me out of it a bit, saying, you know, shit, like, have I written a will and things like that. I was the only, like, non curl on a flight. And then I waited outside the airport for about five minutes, and then the contact showed up with a picture of me, and then I went on to the safe house, and that was the beginning of the journey. <laughs> My route in was through Facebook, and I arranged to fly to Suleimania Airport, which is in Iraq. I got into this safe house, and the first person I see is a young lad from Bournemouth in jogging bottoms, sitting on a settee. Which, uh, you know, kind of took the exoticism out of it. Yeah, absolutely. 
You're taking the, the middle building. Okay, this one right here. The door on the right. Clear. You clear. And make sure make sure the people behind you are picking up the rate uh, the suppressing fire. Okay. Let's walk through again. Let's keep going. Even if we walk through it five times now. Okay. Assault man goes like this. Clears. Yeah, I like fighting. There's no other feeling like it. It's uh, pure adrenaline. About the time that they set the Jordanian pilot on fire, I think that was the point where I was like, okay, I need to go and make a difference. I'm gonna fight pure evil. My parents are good good parents. They care about me a lot, but uh, this is this is something I had to come and do. I, I didn't really inform them too much. I didn't have a sit-down talk with them. And I think it's because I just didn't want to hear their um, their pulls and their their um, their willingness to keep me in a safe place. I, I just wanted to go and not not really hear anything from anybody. Anna, tomorrow uh, morning quick. Hi. What do you want? Going tomorrow, apparently. I understand. But are we leaving at six a.m. tomorrow? Tomorrow, Roj Bosch. We're going. I do want to fight, but it's not because I'm bloodthirsty, it's because I genuinely want to uh, bring democracy to this region. I need to stop talking about things and I actually need to pick up a rifle now and actually fight. I need to actually start killing people for my beliefs. This is what they do before a battle. Tomorrow morning, our group is going to fight. That's why the women are all getting pumped playing music out the fucking truck and dancing like crazy and everyone else just gets ready I guess gets mentally prepared for the task ahead one of the girls she's been shot six times she's obviously fucking hardcore and has uh, seen more action than any of us We will uh, go and attack. <laughs> we will fight against Daesh. We will kill them. Did you get an attack before? No, not before. How do you feel? Uh, I'm nervous, <laughs> but I feel good. I feel happy. I will fight. I've never seen people so utterly fearless going into battle. Teenage girls, you know. It's not something I've seen anywhere else in the world, frankly. I've been in a few different uh, areas of conflict. I've never seen that before. There is danger. We will take casualties in this next attack. But if I become one, then it would be doing exactly what I want to do. And exactly what I feel I should be doing as well. You drive to the nearest place you can go to, to where the fight is and you dismount and just go on foot. Crazy. 
only a hundred of us have turned up any one time to fight the Islamic State, yet 16,000 have turned up to fight for the Islamic State, over a thousand from our own country. I mean, for this offensive, there's like five or six of us dumbasses. Okay. Cool. Nice. Where's the guy that's we had my 17 all in one place at one time. You want to die? No, I'm not. I'm and just did a mock execution on the guy. Put him back in the truck now. Come on. Please. No. Please. Okay. I don't touch, you know? I don't touch, you know? Okay, okay. That's why I'm going to do it. Okay. I'm going to do it. 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 It's not a highly trained standing army of a, of a sovereign nation, it's a militia. You know, the, the war is intrinsically messy. You can't really forge a nation and uh, liberate uh, a people without a lot of fuck ups. Four villages laid out from left to right. The commander's just been telling us in which order we're going to take them, whose groups are doing what, and how it's going to work. You know that the enemy are in the village and they're only a mile away. It's like a computer game where there's like a village and there's a featureless landscape around it and you're supposed to attack it. And it's also horrendous because you know that there's no cover and there's nothing. There's no ditches, there's no trees, it's just endless fields. My family does have a military background. 
I did grow up with medals on my walls from Waterloo, from the Second World War, the First World War, the Boer War. I went to Loughborough University with the understanding that I'd probably join the army afterwards, but I instead got involved with politics and found it much more interesting. My political leanings is naturally conservative. I can imagine what it's like to be hit in the head with a bullet. It's going to smack me in the face like a baseball bat. Someone's going to shoot me in the fucking face. It's going to happen any second now, and there's going to be nothing after that. Bizarrely, that voice is saying that, and another voice is also looking out and saying, right, where am I going to next? What's going to happen next? Our group's going forward, apparently. This village to the left, I think. It's about to get real. Yeah, shit's about to get real. Shit. You think about the idea of getting captured, you know exactly what's going to happen to you. You just think, yeah, I'll either die fighting or I'll kill myself or I won't be captured. It's exciting and scary at the same time, it's exactly what it is. One minute you can just be sat there, just chatting away to someone, the next minute you get shot in the head and you're dead. I mean, not even a minute, literally like less than a second. sort of stood behind a waist height wall and it looked like a sniper just put one bullet straight through the wall and went through his leg. Zoo, zoo, zoo. It's a lot easier on the Xbox and the PlayStation, that's what I'd say.
I always think that we're going to sit here either until bombs drop or until night. That's what I think is going to happen. Because there's no way we can advance now. Because they've got a village which is all burned up. And they're obviously manning the burn because we've been getting shot at shitloads. So if we try anything, we'll just get fucked. So, yeah, I think we're going to be waiting for bombs. It looks like they've lit a fucking load of diesel fires. I think they're trying to smog the sky. Against ISIS, the air support is the biggest thing. It will save the most lives. Where the bombs at? Where the bombs at, Obama? <laughs> David Cameron? Fucking Francois Hollande? Whoever else. Merkel. <laughs> if that guy wasn't blown up, he'd be trying to kill me and everyone else I was with, so he shrug his shoulders. It's not one of my friends, it's not me. It's the enemy good. If they captured me, they'd probably keep me alive for months, torture me, until they eventually put me on a video somewhere and fucking cut my head off, drown me in a cage or whatever, do something disgraceful to me, so they deserve it. When I'm actually fighting, I don't feel particularly excited about it. It's just necessary. ISIS aren't going to walk away. We've got to take this territory back, and we've got to do it by force. Okay, let's go. fighting against a movement which is almost like it belongs in another age, you know, committing all these kinds of barbaric atrocities. The world's allowing them to, to an extent, that's what I feel. A bit of a righteous anger about that. Maybe that's what's driven me that extra bit forward to actually come and actually grab a weapon myself. So if you won't do it, I will. She might have been um, hit with um, some bullet fragments of snake. There's clotting in the uh, fucking uh, bag. 
Have you seen the telegraph pole at my 12 o'clock? I've seen. I saw two guys under there. If you bear with two seconds, because. Go and find out. Okay, I saw definite fucking movement over there. Harry, find out what that was, please! We don't know, they're saying that it's unclear. It's not clear. Okay. Well, I mean, fucking 90% certain, two human shapes, right? Um, this side of the wall, below that middle telegraph pole. Yeah, I see. I don't know if it's fucking friends or enemy. Yeah, yeah. Have our duty! Follow us! We're not fighting a group of people, we're not fighting a nation here, we're fighting an ideology. A twisted, warped ideology that thinks that killing people will send them to heaven. I'm just fighting so people have a choice for the life that they want to live. There are just some houses in front of us, they're not clear. There may be this perception that a lot of the volunteers are out there because they hate Muslims. And some of them might be. But it would be ironic if they were because they're fighting alongside Muslims too. Get some rounds down with your rifle. There's going to be no peace process with ISIS. We have to completely stomp it out. People don't realize the monumental effort it is going to be to remove not just the Islamic State, but the foul aftermath of the Islamic State, which is going to ingrain itself within the minds of an entire generations of young school children. There's explosives and black bags on the roof, and there's wires going down inside the explosives inside this building. Sucks. I have a right to that as much as anybody else have a. Dash were occupying. They're gone now. There's no dash. So yeah, we liberated it. Yeah, they destroy half the village to do that, but. Yeah, do what you gotta do, you know. They at least had like five, five to fifteen guys. Yeah, I would say more than five. I would say like ten, fifteen. So, it was good.
This has been a, a fascinating, mind-blowing and unforgettable experience already. This blows away any of the other trips I've done. I'd swap them all for this one, you know? Is it worth risking your life for that itself? Um, well... It feels right. It just feels right. The biggest news this morning, uh, the casualty that we had yesterday when we were in the attack, she got shot by friendly fire. One of the Kurds had just been arrested because um, he was a Bixi gunner who was supposed to be supporting us. And I think his uh, indiscriminate fire may have been, resulted in her casualty. So um, he's actually under armed guard at the moment. He's been locked up in a room. Yeah, it's very sad because um, friendly fire as well, it seems so avoidable. There's a lot of movement, there's cars and stuff. We are ready. We are all the time ready. <laughs> I don't think ISIS is going to die anytime soon. I mean, it's going to be five, ten years probably at least. They're quite intelligent. They'd rather live to fight another day than just commit suicide for no reason. They were here very recently. The light's still on as well. There's a fan still turning in that room. <laughs> it's probably just some young lad come out here to die for the glory of the cause and that. And the dice have said, okay, there's your video games, there's your suicide vest. You know what to do when the time comes, sort of thing. But uh, presumably he's bottled it at the last minute and, uh, and decided to run instead. So. Well, that is just utterly horrendous. An Islamic State sword. Hey, have you seen this, Jim? No, 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 no. Yeah, There's nothing yeah. friendly about no, that. Sliding, sliding. Just looking, just looking. No, no, no. no. It's, it's a bomb, but we know, we know, we know, we know. That's what no, I thought. No, 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 no. We know, we know, we know. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I know. Dash has been on the run. They've been fleeing, which is obviously great. I suppose it's probably better that they run away in terror rather than stay and fight and potentially some of our friends here could get injured and killed. But it's a, it's a shock, basically, how easy this place is falling into us. Don't think there's a big time, a big chance for Daesh to uh, stay here anymore. I think it's done here. We took their land over and we kicked them out of Kurdistan. My goal was to to fight, to 
fight back the friends that fall in the battles here. Like over 50 friends that I know, they fall in the battle and I can't fight them back. That's a bad feeling. Maybe the next offensive will be better for us. You're still young. Yeah, I'm young. very well sort of defensive ISIS stronghold because it was just a massive compound on top of a mountain. There's no way anyone would have been able to take it. So it felt good to retake that. Wow, look at that, it's a fucking motorcycle. Looks like there's a bit of dead person there. Yeah. But... Oh, oh shit, this is where the dead bodies are. I wouldn't have minded if someone had taken pictures of me and then in 30 years time when people look back on the conflict and particularly my role in it and the, the foreign fighters in it they'll see both sides of the story they'll see us laughing and drinking they'll see us fighting and they'll see us dead There's obviously obvious signs of people living here for a long time, but at the same time, all the rooms are very empty. It kind of makes you think that when they started realizing the fight's over, the fight's over, our troops are running away and all the rest of it, they probably try emptying their headquarters. And these, the poor guys who got fucking done over outside um, uh, were just, yeah, the last one of the last to leave and then just caught the business end of a expected gunship or something. But yeah, no, there's not much to see. I feel like I'm done here. I'm not going to do another three months of living search for duty. Once we is free, the re the, it snips away at my reasons for being here. So, um, we'll see. I don't know. What about you? I, I will say maybe, maybe I will look. If the next offensive will begin soon, I will join. Yeah. And if not, not, I will look. All the Kurdish people that I've met along this journey, this is their life. And we've just sort of come into it for a little while, and then we fuck off, but they stay here forever. They're never going to leave, they're never going to go back home, they're just going to stay in this. So potentially you'll never see them or speak to them ever again. That's kind of the weirdest thing, I think, for me. Strange one. I have the I you. I same you. feeling. <laughs> no, in the first day, I see. Chia Take a sheep Davrim Beritan I feel good, I feel happy, I will fight and deal sauce. That was everyone from our group. You still think that they'll still be in, in Rajava just fighting on, but they're not. Oh, 
I was in two minds about whether to um, to go back or whether to uh, to call it a day at six months. And I think at the end of my six months in Rojava, uh, I was pretty much over the, the sort of 50-50 line in favour of um, calling it a day. You know, I thought a six-month tour, that's, that's enough. But the amount of friends that I lost over the six months in Rojava more than doubled over the the two or three days after I after I came out, after I came to France. And I don't really know what else to do, apart from go back. I will go back. I know that the Islamic State is a barbaric organization that needs to go. And if I can go out and join my friends again and fight, then I'll definitely be doing that. For support on any of the issues raised by the programme, go to channel4.com support. Next on 4 on the run and hunted.